Studio One's Room Reverb. Let's take a closer look at it. In this project here, or this song, I've got a simple piano part, and I'm just gonna go ahead and play that back really quickly so we can hear what the dry sound, or the dry piano sounds like before we get into the various parameters of the Room Reverb. And I think we have an idea there. Now, uh, we can access the Room Reverb by coming to our effects. I'll press F7, and we're taken directly there. And within the Personas folder here, if we click on the arrow, we can expand out. These are listed by alphabetical order. So down at the bottom here, we will find our Room Reverb. Now, I can click, hold, and drag this on top of the track, and that will add it to our piano but I'm going to F7 and close out the browser. F4, open up the inspector and show you that we can also come to our inserts within the inspector for this active channel. Click on the plus symbol. Our personas folder is expanded out. Let's scroll down to the bottom. The room reverb is here. I'll click once and we can open it up that way as well. I'll F4 and close out the inspector. And so the room reverb is a reverb that simulates different rooms or spaces, and it, it can actually best be used as a send effect or on a main output channel. And now that we have the room reverb loaded, let's go ahead and play back this piano part and see what it's going to sound like now that we have it loaded on the track. Keep in mind that the dry wet mix is down pretty low. Let's just see how this sounds initially. Okay, so the effect is pretty subtle uh, with the default settings, but let's just go ahead and take a look at the parameters and displays and go over what we can really do with this device here. Starting from the upper left-hand corner, we have our power, so we can activate and deactivate the device. We have a bypass, so if we'd ever like to hear our dry signal without being processed by the reverb, we can act, uh, just press that there. We now have an area for managing our presets, our own user presets. So if we've made some configurations or settings down below that we'd like to keep for future use, we can save it and reload it from this area. We next have a area for Studio One's presets that it comes with by default. So if you're new to working with the Room Reverb or Reverb in general, you can come here, select a preset, and then just take note of the different settings that are made down below to the parameters. And this is going to give you an idea of how you can create the reverb that you would like to do based on how these change for the different types of presets that we have here. We then have an area for setting up automation, compare, copy, and paste. If we'd like to copy our settings to a second instance of Room Reverb that we have within our song, we can copy go to that second instance and then paste with these controls. And then below here we have a display that will give us an overall idea of our reverb characteristics um, along a self-adjusting time scale. Now these top to bottom vertical lines show our time reference. So if I were to increase the length for instance then this will change to reflect our adjustments. So we've got the length here and our time goes to about 100 milliseconds here. So if I adjust the length, we'll see how these will dynamically update as I increase that. If I take the length all the way up, then we can see we're all the way out to 10 seconds here. And I'm going to just control click to put that back to the default position. And then next you'll notice here that we have some shorter vertical lines. These are going to give us an indication of where our early reflections will be in relation to our time scale that we just looked at. Now, our early reflections will be the initial sounds that bounce off of walls, ceilings, etc. before the full reverb kicks in. And they help create different illusions in our brain for the size of our virtual room. So if I go ahead and play this track back again, and I'm going to actually take the mix up a little bit. And then I'm going to take the pre all the way to the left. We're at zero milliseconds. And we can see that represented here. Now as I move this to the right.
And I'm actually going to increase the length a little bit. So you can see how these early reflections have been pushed together and we're all the way past the 100 milliseconds and it creates more of, if you're in a huge warehouse, you're going to get those early reflections before the tail of our reverb. And the further back left I go. The space gets smaller. And I'm going to control click to take the mix back down and control click to take the pre back as well as the length. And finally in our display here we have a colored envelope which represents the reverb tail. And if I adjust the length as we've seen here then this is going to give us a visual representation of how the envelope of our tail will be affected. So as I increase the length, you'll notice that the time scale increases as, as well as the uh, kind of decay of our envelope. And I can just keep taking that out. And again, we come to 10 seconds here. If I play back, Okay, and that is the length. I'll control click and put that back. Next we have pre and length, and we've just seen how these function. For pre, we have a range of zero milliseconds through 327 milliseconds. And for the length, we can choose times between 498 milliseconds all the way up to 50 seconds. And we can use our mouse wheel actually to make finer adjustments to these controls. Now below this top display here, we have adjustments for changing the dimensions of our room, size, width, and height. And this is pretty straightforward and we're provided a secondary display here in the center that will give us a general idea of what our adjustments are doing to our virtual room. So as I say change the width, we can see that the width is expanding, the height, and also take note that the top display are Adjustments that we make to the room size will change the uh, the pre delay and the length and time scale of the uh, display that we were just taking a look at because these all relate to one another. And I'm going to control click to put these back. In the bottom left hand corner, we have an area for geometry. We have distance, asymmetry, and plane. Now notice the blue and red and green vertical lines here. These are meant to represent the left and right of our source audio in the room and the green vertical line represents our listener's position. As we make adjustments, you can see how the distance here, it's all basically all the way to the right and everything's pretty much far apart, our left and right of the source and our listener position. As I move to the left, that's gonna bring these three together. The asymmetry is going to change kind of the left and right position of the listener in relation to our source. You can see our listener here is going kind of panning to the left and right as I change the asymmetry. Actually, let's listen to what that sounds like. We then have plane, and this is basically going to kind of adjust the height of where we are. So if you take note of these vertical lines, there is a little dot in these that runs along the uh, vertical plane or the vertical line. So if I adjust them, we'll see that that moves up and down. Moving on, we next have an area for adjusting the character of our reverb. And the dampness affects the high frequencies in our reverb, and we can attenuate them with this control. 
In the middle here, we have population, and this adjusts the base response of our reverb. And moving to the left will create more of a static tail, whereas moving to the right will create a more dynamic and moving tail. Again, we'll play back to hear how that sounds. Let me increase the length a little bit here. So, to the left is going to be a more static tail. And then to the right, this should move a bit more and be a bit more dynamic. Okay, and then at the bottom we have reflexivity, reflexivity, which controls the smoothness of the surfaces in our virtual room here. And this is going to affect kind of the echo of our reverb. In the upper right hand corner here, we have a mix knob, which will control the blend of our reverb tail and the early reflections. Below the reverb mix, we have a dry wet mix. So all the way to the left, we have our dry signal. And then all the way to the right is going to be our fully processed signal. We have this little button here that we can click to lock the mix and we are not allowed to make any adjustments there. I'll go ahead and untick that. And finally here at the bottom we have perform and quality. So this is for an economy performance mode. So if we click that, then that will be less intense on our CPU. And of course, clicking the quality will improve the quality of our reverb. And that is the Studio One Room Reverb. Thank you for watching.